the West, once rich in gold and silver, is now rich in American history. What better way to experience history than to go to the ghost towns that once formed the Wild West? Good day, my name is Victoria Rose. I live in my 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ out in the West. I don't really have any base or location or destination. It's so peaceful out here. This morning, I need to empty out my old water and fill it up with better water. You have to do that every so often, and it has officially been my month anniversary of just wandering around out on the road. I've done this last year before, so it's not my first time, and I've also done it internationally, but this time around, in this segment, I've done it a month straight, so. So one of the most important things you can carry with you is water. Um, well, for me, extra oil, because my Jeep leaks real <laughs> little packets of food like oatmeal and stuff and blankets. This is my water setup. So I'm gonna use the water in here to clean it out. This thing is pump powered and I haven't even had to charge this yet. I got two gallons of fresh water. I didn't get three because I think it's better to keep a little less water in so I don't have to waste it. I'm gonna rinse this out with some fresh water. The things you don't think about, like whenever you're traveling and have this lifestyle, you come face to face with so many different things that you wouldn't really think too much about otherwise, like going to the bathroom, your water usage, your garbage usage. You just see how much you produce as a human, even if you don't want to know. You know, you come very close in contact with your own excrement, let's just say, with your own intake of water and the garbage and everything. And it's just, you realize, multiply that by every person in the world and it's a lot we are messy as humans so any time that you can kind of cut down on that before whenever i filled this up i put in some mineral drops in it because a lot of our water is depleted of minerals but i didn't bring my drops with me so fresh water slides just so perfectly, just exactly. And I also keep this little cup right beside it to, uh, yeah, everything has to be small and compact. We're gonna travel to a ghost town called Nothing, out in the middle of nowhere and stay overnight close to it. I just saw this, this town and the history of it and it's kind of funny. There is a hot spring right beside it that I also wanted to hike to. Apparently now we're just visiting all the hot springs we come across. But first, we have to get prepared to go out in the middle of nowhere. I just spent $35 at this gas station. Um, I don't recommend getting your groceries from a gas station, but this is the only place for a long time. Before this, I got an oil change. I got like some bananas and oranges and stuff. So I have a little bit of food and some eggs, but I wanted to get a couple more things. I couldn't help it, but they had like this whole stand of raw honey and it was only for this, it was only $17 which is a really good deal. This is cat's claw honey, mango tamarindo. Probably said that completely wrong, but I've never had it before. So I wanted to get um, some chamoy mango, but it was crazy how much corn syrup and calories are in those. But for $34, I got the honey, I got a protein bar, a little thing of cheese, a little thing of protein chips, and the mangoes and a drink. So this is the only stop before nothing. <laughs> So I just figured I'd get the stuff there, make sure that we survive. Okay, we are walking this trail. I'm totally lost, I went the wrong way. This path is not clearly marked, so I just like, oh, I'll just go down this way, it will be a shortcut, but it's not, and I'm not on any type of path. And I forgot to mention that the place that I'm in right now is actually the, uh, I think, rattlesnake capital of Arizona. Really bad attractions. I shouldn't have gone off the trail. And now I've just been walking and walking and getting further in, but actually not even closer. I thought this would be an easy hike. My microphone must have stopped working here but I was talking about the magnificent size of the cactuses here. It's incredible to see in real life, and I'll show you a size comparison later on in this video. Also, this hot spring was really nice, and the temperature was kind of like a bathtub temperature.
just found my camp spot, which is actually right in town of the middle of nothing. <laughs> it's actually a little bit off of it. So I'm going to camp here tonight and I'll show you, well, the ghost town, but there's not a lot to see. It's starting to rain and the sun's gonna go down soon. So we made it just in time. So I want to try some of these mango. Try this mango. Mm. I'm really, really hungry. So I don't know if that's why this tastes so good, but it really hits all the spots. I'm so hungry. <laughs> that was a long hike, like way longer than I thought it was gonna be. I got lost three times. I have a terrible sense of direction. Like this lifestyle, you'd think I would learn to get around, but no, I don't. <laughs> It is nighttime and nothing. Sorry, I can't get over that the ghost town's called nothing. There's not a lot to report. I know the title of this video is staying overnight in a ghost town. I mean, we'll see. Nothing to report. It's not a lot of content. Good night from nothing. out the sweater and heated blanket because it is cold. It got into the 30s, which I've been avoiding, you know, the cold weather for a bit now, so I was surprised it got so cold. I guess I should have checked the temperature, but um, that's why we're heading more south to Tucson. Let's have a little energy here. We're gonna try this pure Arizona honey. <laughs> I don't know any honey apparently. I got my oil changed. They recommended I try some Lucas to put in it. You know, for her being such a capable, you know, strong vehicle, she's, I feel like I have to favor her a um, lot. I sometimes just think about how easy things would be if I had like a normal, modern vehicle. I see trucks just flying down these dirt roads. Yuki is a very bumpy ride, and I feel like any one bump could just completely throw her out of alignment and break her in half. So my anxiety is always very high. Let us go and look at this little town of nothing and then move on to the next ghost town. As you can tell, there's really not much to see, but this is the small ghost town of Nothing, Arizona. In 1977, Richard Buddy Kensworthy established Nothing, Arizona, a quirky settlement 118 miles northwest of Phoenix and 23 miles south of Wikiup, known for its rattlesnakes. The town's sign humorously boasts of its citizens' hope, faith, and belief, and in the work ethic of nothing. The population was only four at its peak with a gas station and convenience store. It's really just a uh, coyote run across. This is my camp spot for the night, by the way. Now I wanna go check out this really historic graveyard. It's a pioneer graveyard. to November 1900. Most of these are unmarked. I don't know how you really tell who is who, but I'm sure someone knows. I'm not much of a, you know, graveyard girl or anything like that, but I think like, sometimes they can be pretty peaceful just because everyone's at rest. You know, people back then, they didn't live very long. Two-year-old, oh, there's a little, some a little car there. That's so sad. So I mentioned before that we're gonna stay in another ghost town. We're in Congress, Arizona now, which you probably never heard of and I hadn't either but the beauty of me driving through you know on the middle of nowhere places is that I learned a little bit of history if I choose to look it up um, but that's why I went down and looked at the cemetery because Congress used to be a mining town in the 1800s and so they struck gold here and it stayed pretty booming until 1930 when it shut down so now it's technically a ghost town this is a ghost town road that i'm staying on right here so i stopped at the dollar general because it's the only place around <laughs> to buy anything so i'm putting this off i don't know why i don't like to buy things i don't like to have things it's always like even if it's not that expensive it's just like oh it's gonna weigh me down <laughs> i got a can opener to get cheaper cans of food and have more variety because i've been having to only get the pop top kinds and i got tomatoes okra and corn and mixed vegetables for tonight i already had some boiled eggs and a protein bar and bananas and stuff this morning I also got some grits to keep on hand because that's handy. And then I found some cottage cheese as well, which is nice. I like eating. 
<laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say there, but yeah. It's just, I just like, he has been having another issue. Well, it's the same issue. I thought that it was to do with the catalytic converter. You know, there's a reason that that would go out. There's just roaring noise and very slow acceleration. I'm pretty certain, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain it's a leak in the exhaust manifold. If it's a bad one and that whole thing needs to be replaced, that's very expensive. It's just like a gasket or I can just like patch it somehow. That would be nice. You guys are probably just as tired as I am of these issues, but it's just like, I have put a lot of miles on her and she is old. And I know a lot of people would be like, just do yourself a favor, get rid of her, get a new vehicle. And it's not that simple. I don't have a home out here. It's, I can't just swap it out for a new vehicle. I need some sort of goal in all of this. left off with me being very concerned about my exhaust manifold. I'm still thinking about it, but I'm kind of <laughs> choosing to put it to the side because I think that once the car heats up, it closes the seal because there's no fumes and stuff. There's no check engine light right now. So if a check engine light comes on and if I smell fumes, then we'll take care of it then. But you know, my plan was to not fix things until until they break. I did stop at a mechanics and they read the codes also, and there was nothing that showed up that was the regular, so we're just gonna. I'm out here in the beautiful, and I really hope I'm saying this right. I don't have internet to look it up properly, but uh, the desert with the huge cigarro cactuses. And I do wanna address something. I have an issue where I'll say words wrong. My mom does the same thing. And it's not that I don't know what the words mean. It's for some reason they get twisted in my head and I just say it a certain way and it's kind of habitual and it's really hard to catch myself sometimes when I do it. So if I say words wrong and I'm saying it in the right way, let it go. Cause uh, it's just a little learning thing that um, sometimes I am not great at. I was in Phoenix and I drove out here cause I needed to get out of the city. And I got a package that I was waiting for sent to an Amazon box, which took like three days and I had to wait for it but it's this. I was hesitant to get this because I'm like, am I gonna use it that much? But if I'm doing hikes, like I'm going out in the desert and it's getting hotter, especially because I'm heading towards Tucson, which is way hotter than like where I was. I'm gonna need proper hydration and I have been dehydrating myself while I go on hikes. You just fill this pouch up with water. I feel like a real hiker. Do I look like a Ninja Turtle? <laughs> I got some sweetened dried orange slices. It's just orange slices and cane sugar. The full orange. I love all the little animal noises and birds and stuff. I need to fill up my water and I need to maybe make some tea because I think these orange slices are a bit too sweet to just eat on their own. <laughs> I forgot how much I love grits. What is in there? What is that? It's dirt. What a waste of water. I can't really see, but there's like tons of dirt. Okay, so I didn't fill it up fully because for some reason I just want to dehydrate myself, you know? To doesn't matter how, try, how much I try not to. No, it's just, it's, it's gonna be heavy. All right, so if you guys want a nice size comparison of how big these cactuses really are, I'm 5'4". They're so big. We are doing a hike, but it's a more of a modern one. I don't even need to bring a snack or anything because I had a protein bar, so we just need water. I'm feeling down or something. Movement always helps. And I always forget to help. I'm like, I just force myself to do it. And so if you're feeling down, get up. Go for a walk after you finish this video and watch all the ads. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> also, apparently there's desert tortoises out here. I, I want to see one. Jumping chola. This is obviously prickly pear cactus. That's a cactus that you can eat. 
So facts on the Zagaro cactus. They don't grow their first arm until 50 to 75 years. They can live up to 200 years and it produces the official flower for Arizona. Anyways, enough about the hiking, enough about all this stuff. You're here for maybe, I don't know why you're here, <laughs> the ghost towns. It is Easter today. Um, on my way to Tombstone, our final ghost town. I might also go to Brisbane, but that'll probably be in the next video because this video has gotten long. Celebrating holidays by yourself. It can be either a nice little thing you do with yourself or it could be depressing. I don't think it's depressing. I think it's kind of nice to celebrate. So today I really wanted some sweets. I took that as an opportunity to try something new and I've been loving um, like chili spice mango. So I wanted to try this, which I've seen around. I don't exactly know how to say it, tamarind. But it's a very interesting fruit, I guess it would be. But this has, um, it's chili. And that's what it looks like. It was good. Growing up, we used to get Easter baskets and we get cans of like spaghettios and olives and candies and um, something creative, big strawberry. I had a beautiful hike. It's right in between Tucson and Tombstone, so I thought I would stop in and get some exercise. I guess this is my Easter basket. <laughs> and we're gonna continue on to Tombstone, and I got a really cool place to stay there. I'm very excited to see it. Okay, so I'm at the place that I'm staying tonight, and it's so cute. Um, I thought it would be fitting for the Tombstone theme we're going for here, so let me show you. It's a shepherd's wagon. Adorable. It is very windy and overcast today. So Tombstone isn't technically a ghost town, but it has a huge Wild West history. If you know about Western movies and things like that, you'll know about Tombstone. Also is known for the most notorious gunfights in history. There's also some reenactments and things in the town. I'll show you what the town looks like tomorrow because everything's closed today. Possible that there are ghosts still around these parts. So anyways, welcome. Me. So I settled in a little bit. I read up on the shepherd's wagon. This is an authentic shepherd's wagon and it was made in Wyoming in the 1800s. And they would use shepherd's wagon for shepherds and their sheep. But it said that because it was such an isolating, lonely job that some shepherds would just go insane and they would like think of other ways to like make money and go strike it rich somewhere. Or they'd just get really sad and depressed and lonely. You know, the bed is pretty much just big enough for me. Actually, so cozy in here and ready to go to sleep for the night. I'll show you Tombstone tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. I'm going to make up some coffee. If you really think about it, this is one of the first mobile homes that they had, so it's quite fitting. Like, this would be car life back in the day, except you hook up to a horse, so this would be the fifth wheel. This is the Birdcage Theater. There's like 26 people that died there. It's the longest poker game also, which lasted eight years. <laughs> and um, so apparently it's very, very haunted.
Okay, the sun is finally coming out a little bit. It has been a very cold day without the sun here and not the best day to explore a town. I did get some little things here. I got a skirt that I'll, sh I'll try on in the next video, but I'm really excited about it. I didn't expect to buy it and I just had to get this. I know, it's very uh, touristy. Put some respect on me. <laughs> I also, I got a postcard for my grandpa. We're going to go to Bisbee now, um, and I'll do that in the next video. But thank you so much for coming with me on this um, Western ghost town type of vibe video. And I will see you in the next one. So stay extraterrestrial.